So, hi, I'm Imogen from Course Report, and I'm talking to Sarah, who is currently studying at an online boot camp called Flatiron Learn Verified. She's now going to do a screen share with us and show us her online learning platform. Um, we get a lot of questions from students who want to know more about um, online boot camps and what they look like and how it works. So, we're going to find out now what Learn Verified looks like. So, Sarah, thanks so much for showing us um, this platform. Yeah. Um, yeah, so maybe you can just start it by explaining to us um, what we're seeing here, like what, what does this um, first page um, yeah. mean? Yeah, so this first page is um, my profile page. Um, it kind of shows how, what my streak is for how long um, every like activity that I have done. Um, so right now I'm on a four-day streak. Last week I was on a 21-day streak. Um, but if you go down here, it shows kind of the lessons I've completed. Um, these are all kind of the different sections that I've gone through. Um, and as you can see, I am actually on this rail section right now. Um, it goes through, it shows all of the different um, readings, lessons, et cetera. Um, and so if we go past this, all the way down um, and then this shows exactly what um, lesson I'm on right now so I'm on the devised roles lab um, and that is on this page um, and this kind of goes through the lesson what I'm doing on this lab um, has instructions um, this lesson goes along with the reading that was right before that so that's this reading I like to kind of keep both tabs open so that I can reference both a lot easier um, and that's kind of what we have here. That's the basics. Cool. That's awesome. Um, and how can you, sh maybe you can show us like what you do if you want to communicate with an instructor. Yeah. So, um, if I wanted to communicate with an instructor, I would hit and ask the question, ask a question right here, um, and type something in, um, this is a pretty good way to get the attention of an instructor and um, they'll either like help you or refer you to someone else, um, another instructor who might be able to help you. Um, that's one way I would do it. And then we also have a Slack channel. So the other way that I might get someone's attention is by writing a question in there. Cool. That's awesome. And, um, and how, do, how do you interact with other students through the platform? Um, I would interact with them on our Slack channel. Oh, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Nice. And then do you, but then I suppose you can still like um, talk to them about different parts of, of this platform as well through the Slack channel. Yes. Yep. Cool. And do you build, do you actually build projects through this channel? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Um, so I would either to open up this lab, I would either hit this open button right here. Um, and then there's a learn gen that you would install at the beginning of the program. Um, or else what I usually do is, um, sorry. what I would usually do is open a terminal. So We'll open a new one here and then I would do like a learn open and that's going to go ahead and open up my current lesson as well as um, sublime text for what I'm working on oh cool that's awesome and um, I know you were mentioning before about um, github and how that's integrated with this platform can you maybe explain a little bit about that and how you use github yeah, so um, all of the labs are on GitHub. So if I hit this right here, I'm going to open up to GitHub. Um, and when I do learn open, basically all of this screen right here is getting um, forked into my local uh, machine. And so this is basically what I would have forked. Um, it has all of the app files there. Um, and then... I would, um, just like a normal developer would, I would work on all of the tests. So let's say we go into this and I can run a R spec. And then this will show me all of my tests that are not passing right now. Um, 
and say I did have all of them passing, I would run a learn command, which basically is going to be our spec right now. Um, but if I was passing everything, then this right here would turn green saying that everything's passed and that I'm okay to um, submit a pull request to GitHub. Um, and then once I did that, I would hit learn submit like that. So, and that's basically how you use GitHub with this um, and exactly what I would do. Cool, that's awesome. And so once you've finished, um, once you've kind of um, passed the local tests and stuff, does that then allow you to move on to the next lesson? Yes, so I can go back to an old lesson and kind of show you how that would work, I guess. Oh, awesome. Um, so, we'll go to this can, -can lab. So I have everything passing. Um, if I wanted to look at a solution after I had what passed every, my stuff passing, um, I can go to GitHub and look at this solution, which may be um, a different way than how I got everything to pass. Um, I think that's really great that you can see um, different ways to do things and maybe that'll help you see ways that you could refactor your code. Um, but so I've submitted everything and then I'll hit next lesson and go to this. Um, and now this is a reading for this next lesson that I'm working on. Um, if I wanted to hit next lesson now, it's not going to want me to go forward um, just because I'm not done with this. Cool. And, um, and how, does, how does this kind of platform compare for you with um, other like just free mm -hmm. online um, training websites like Code Academy? Yeah, I'd say that um, this is a lot more comprehensive than a Code Academy. Um, it's going to tell you ways that you should do things and why that might be the best um, option. Um, it's also going to, um, one thing that I've noticed that's different from Code Academy is that I can see the test on whatever lab I'm working on. I can kind of interact with them and get a better feel for what I'm supposed to be doing. Whereas with Code Academy, there might be like, this is the exact way that you're supposed to put it in, but I don't always know what that way is. And I, it's hard for me to um, kind of bring those two together. Whereas this way, I have full control over the code. Um, I should not be um, changing any of the tests, but I at least get to look at them and see what they are and what I'm working towards. Cool, that's awesome. And have there been any parts of using this platform that you found challenging or a steep learning curve? Um, the foundation, the program is really good because everything kind of builds on each other. So, um, I mean, once you get through like some of the foundational things, you can see a lot of those patterns or ideas kind of repeating themselves, um, which is good. There's always going to be something a little bit, something that's a little bit further than what you've already learned. Um, so those are the points where it's really helpful to go and Google things on your own, try and figure out what that concept is, um, and ever, everything's eventually going to be explained. Cool. And I'm just seeing now you've got a little thing, and it says it's got a little little pictures of the stu students working. Yep. Does, so those are the other students who are working on the, on this same um, lesson. Yep. So um, maybe if I had a question or I knew that they were kind of at the same point as me, I might reach out to one of them to either see if they want a peer program or to see if they um, solved something a certain way or if they were getting stuck on something or they would be the people who I would want to reach out to. Cool, and is, is that something you're encouraged to do, to kind of reach out and do peer, peer programming if, if, you're, if you need yes. help? Yes. That's awesome. Um, and is there any kind of like feedback channel through this platform where you can kind of give feedback on how you're finding it, that sort of thing? Um, on like the lessons? Yeah, like, well, just on the platform in general, like, is there sort of a, a somewhere where you can give feedback? Yeah, so I mean, if I ran into a bug, I could report a bug here. Um, otherwise, mm -hmm. I've definitely seen, um, if I was to go into a poll request, I've definitely seen people say, maybe check out this test or this kind of seems funny, um, things like that. And that's also a place where I would go to like an ask a question and if something seemed weird to me, I might ask it there. 
Awesome, cool. And um, I suppose if you wanted to give more kind of um, broad feedback about the course itself, would you give those to one of the instructors you're in touch with, that kind of thing? Yeah, that is what I would do. I would probably email that. Cool, that's awesome. And what, so what do you like best about using this platform, would you say? Um, I like that I um, know, I like that I have a path for learning. So I can easily see, like, after I finish session, sessions, I'm going to learn authentication and things like that. Um, I like that, um, I mean, I trust Flatiron a lot that they know what they're talking about. They have a really good track record of getting people in jobs and um, just teaching people to code. Um, and so I like that they kind of lay out that path for you and make it available so that I don't have to spend my time questioning is this what I should be learning? Is this the right way to learn it? And things like that. Awesome. Cool. All right. Um, I think that's that's great. Unless there's anything else about the platform that you wanted to mention or demonstrate? I think that kind of covers it for me. Awesome. Cool. That's great. It looks like a really cool platform, like very like intuitive and stuff like that. Yes, it's very intuitive. Awesome. Oh, thanks so much for um, chatting with us today. Um, is there anything else you wanted to add just about Flatiron in general or anything like that? Yeah, I mean, I'd say that it's a great program. It's definitely worth um, the time. Um, and I know that a lot of people have put a lot of work into building it and into maintaining its community. Um, so I definitely um, consider it and if not, do it. Awesome. Cool. Oh, well, thank you so much, Sarah, for chatting with me.